Welcome Welcome back to OS Bridge. This is Cami Chaos. This is Strange Love Live. Right now we're joined by Mike Rogway and John Hill. Where can we find you guys on Twitter? At HillJohnG. At HillJohnG. At Rogway. Rogway, can you spell it for them? R-O-G-O-W-A-Y. What are you guys doing here at the Open Source Bridge Conference? Uh, Well, I work for uh, the Columbian in IT and I'm just uh, trying to stretch my mind a little bit and explore some open source stuff that uh, we're hoping to dive into a little bit at the paper. Okay. So. As for me, I, I'm the tech writer, though personally I'm non-technical. <laughs> Almost all these sessions are over my head, uh, except so for maybe the, the mayor's interviewer. keynote. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but I'm, I, you know, I've got a Sunday feature to write too, but I'm hanging out here just to get a sense of the vibe, to get a sense of what people are getting out of it, mm-hmm. uh, and whether it's the sort of thing that's uh, generating enough interest to be back next year, years to come. I'm hearing it's going to be back. Preliminary, but I, I heard there's a meeting on Saturday to plan it. So. Oh, I, I'm sure that's it. All the organizers <laughs> are thrilled. They get through this process. Friday ends, and it's right back at it. So what are you seeing while you're here? Uh, the indications that I'm talking to people around the table are this morning are, are really positive. Uh, folks really like the intimate nature of it, uh, particularly compared to OzCon and the yeah. fact that when they sit in on a session, they're not getting pitched to, uh, they're not getting marketed to. You know, I, I think everyone agrees they'd like to see more people here, and I'm sure no one feels that more than the organizers. Uh, but I think it sounds like, for the most part, this is what people came for, and yeah. so the people who are here seem, seem enthused. Uh, were you here yesterday? No, I didn't make it over at all yesterday. I was here for a while yesterday, yeah. Are you guys going to be here tomorrow at all for the um, non-conference, unconference sessions? I probably won't. I wish I was, but uh, I have some actual work to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not yeah. that this isn't work, but it, yeah, that sounds fun. You know, yeah. sort of bar campish, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's very similar. I think it's just uh, on a larger scale, scale because you've got the larger facilities, more rooms, maybe even bigger post-it notes, I'm not sure if <laughs> that, but that's what my goal would be, see if I could get, like, you know, maybe legal size post-it note instead, write out the whole talk, but, uh-huh. so what have you guys uh, seen today, what are you looking forward to seeing later? Uh, I just got uh, out of the Christmas season session, that mm-hmm. was really interesting. You we know, had that on our stream. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We figured something people would want to see. Yeah, that was... Um, thought-provoking. I was wondering, he tweeted the other day that he was not sure why he called it, what he called it, but <laughs> I think he made his point. What did know? he call it? Oh, something about supermarkets and how to fight the... Oh, oh it was uh, social supermarkets yeah. and someone give me the last part of the... <laughs> I know there was something about celery in the talk, but that's not in the title. Social network. Social yeah, network supermarkets them. and how to defeat them. All right, I want to ask you guys a little bit about something that we've talked with a few other people on our show about, um, but it's newspapers transitioning into the digital age. Yeah. How's that working for you? <laughs> it, it's the, the yin and the yang. Uh, I think it's no secret newspapers are having trouble figuring out how to present themselves online. The flip side, though, is... As a reporting tool, uh, the digital age is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the number of people that I can talk to in a day, even if I spend all day at a place like this, even if I didn't have a story to write, I might have meaningful conversations with a half dozen or a dozen people. You know, with Twitter, email, uh, blogs, RSS feeds, you know, you're hearing from hundreds of people a day. And yeah, you got to filter out, you know, a certain amount, but you get a much better sense of the broader conversation and there's a lot more that you can pull into. So in terms of gathering information and then redisseminating it, uh, it's great in terms of, you know, have we got our platform together, we got our own act together, uh, there's no question, we're not there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really fascinated with the uh, leveraging newspapers um, position in their marketplace, you know, their their brand or whatever you want to call it, and Mm -hmm. taking that and using it to create communities or tap into the communities that are already out there and and uh, engage more with the community and I think that uh, I'd like to see more of that with newspapers and see us kind of be more transparent and more 
uh, involved with our readers and, mm-hmm. our, and the non-readers because we have a lot more of those now, nowadays. It's uh, interesting to have your perspective because we've had a few people from the Oregonian on to talk about it, but they've all been on the newspaper side of things, and you're in the IT side of things. Mm-hmm. You're in the project management, and you're trying to get things done behind the scenes, and it sounds like trying to make a push for coming into this century. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, you know, a lot of times IT departments uh, can some whole companies back and mm-hmm. uh, where I am I'm lucky enough to where we have a pretty forward-thinking staff so we're always trying to think of ways that we can push things and actually I think it's interesting because we're almost <laughs> it's sort of almost the opposite where I work yeah. we're uh, pushing constantly going you know hey let's look at this let's do that and um, the, one of our big barriers is uh, money the monetizing it of course I think it's a big barrier for most everything in the world yeah, <laughs> 95% of the revenue still comes from print yeah. and so you don't want to ignore your core too much you're in, you know robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of thing yeah. uh, so if we could figure that one out we'd be well John it's you, you know you mentioned IT your UIT folks pushing things through uh, you know I think a lot of places IT departments come to, uh, kind of out of left field into an organization. They have no background in it. You're a journalist by training, and so yeah. <laughs> uh, you kind of know where you'd like to see things going in an ideal world, and yeah. you also have some knowledge of the tools that so are So you available. have both sides of... Yeah, I used to work in the newsroom, and actually, uh, some disclosure here, Mike and I used to, he used to work at the Columbian, and uh, we worked together in the newsroom, so... Uh, yeah, we were knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I, I, but by the same token, I really like uh, something Mike did recently with your, uh, you did a, like a live chat that yeah. I sat in on. And, uh, I, I I joined on one of them. You've done two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you did another one. I, I did a second one on the VC scene after that, which we tried to moderate a little bit. This is, as you talk about trying to figure things out, you know, the first one, I was the only panelist on there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I just said, hey, I, my thinking was, well, there'd probably be half dozen people interested and in, let's just let them have their say and in the hour we were there we had you know 400 people 400 comments there were fewer yeah. than 400 people probably a tenth of that or something but uh, and so that was a real eye-opener that they, hey there's enormous appetite for this uh, so the second time through we tried to moderate it uh, we might have overdone that a little bit but we also had additional panelists and you know let them have their say. Uh-huh. There was one that where you had something. Was that the one where you had a comment almost every ten seconds or something? Yes. It was streaming by so fast, I could. It, it was like that. it was like Twitter. Is what it was like. Um, but you know, it's harder to have a structured conversation that way. I mean, yeah. yeah let's bring in four hundred people and put them around the microphones to see what happens. It, it, yeah. it was sort of like that. <laughs> yeah, it was. I. I was catch I during the beginning of it I was able to keep up and read what was going on and then by the end I was like oh okay I have no idea I missed <laughs> something up there and down but here <laughs> a, again a, a cool yeah, part of this of this friends. medium is you know a lot of what we do is online is ephemeral but these conversations are saved you know mm-hmm. you can go back to them and mm-hmm. you know newspapers are ephemeral you put it in the recycling it's gone this is always up there and you can go back and refer to it and say okay this is what Rick said this is what Cammy said this is what John said you know, and, and sort of get a sense of where people are, where people are, and where people are thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's great in terms of the. That's what's so great about the web. You can just a limitless store of information, whereas you know, print. Well, you, you know, you have microfish. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they made me learn how to use the microfish machine when I was a kid because you know they were sure that it was going to be a vital part of our world forever and ever and ever. And it's just funny. Not so much anymore. Yeah, although then there's uh, what they're converting a lot of microfiche now to CD-ROM and stuff like that, or DVD or whatnot. They're putting it something shiny that you put in your computer, yeah. <laughs> right, but I was reading something about that a while ago. The I think it was the Library of Congress where they were really struggling with what formats to store things in because. Right. You Eventually, know, CD-ROMs will, will be gone. Yeah. Will that format be around? Will PDF be a, for, a format that you can open 20 years from now? At least with microfiche, <laughs> if, if if your magnifying glass is big enough, you can <laughs> still <laughs> still read it. It's yet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, There's yeah something tactile there. I think didn't you guys talk with uh, 
Sean? Uh, I think um, it was last week. Last week, yeah. yeah. Well, I was talking to him just yesterday about the process of digging up information on Paul Newman for his biography, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of that still is digging yeah. around. But it's a lot easier now that you know they'll print it out and send it to you rather than you having to be hunched over a machine. Really? Machines. To you. Yeah. But you still have to know to look for it. You still have to know to ask for it. So right. you've got to find that information somewhere. Well, I'm going to let you guys grab some lunch before right. another session shows. It was really good to talk nice to you. It's nice you. to meet you this morning. Pleasure I think I saw you. you at the Green Dragon before. It's yes. nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. It's good talking to you guys. Again, uh, Twitter names just before you go, real quick. At Hill John G. At Hill John G. And at Rogaway. At Rogaway, R-O-G-O-W-A-Y. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you.